Welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together various blocks used in the quilt called X's and O's. If you'd like to purchase this pattern or our magazine, please visit our website. We are going to be using some wonderful blue batiks. Uh, also added in some browns to this and then there is a light patterned background and we have a variety of other fabrics we're adding for some accent. You'll see borders, inner borders, and some repeats of um, some darker navies that kind of make cornerstones that kind of um, little gems that pop throughout that quilt. So we're going to start with a base of the two and a half inch pre-cut strip but we're going to add some of the the other fabrics from that line into it, into the mix to make it even more fabulous. So let's look at some of the blocks that are in the quilt. We are going to be creating 16 patches like this of a variety of the fabrics from the two and a half inch um, pre-cut strips. Then we're going to be adding in a block that we call the O block. You can see it makes a circle like a donut here in the center and we're just using diagonal seams and I'll show you how to make that block. Making the exact same pieces but orienting them differently will create the X block. You can see the X going across the block here. And then we're going to need to um, create partial blocks like this as our outside setting from the blocks before we get to the inner and the outer border. So just to make the rest of, the, of our um, pattern kind of float, we'll be making this little um, two patch block like this. So let's start with the 16 patch. That's some of the easy part. We get to use those two and a half inch pre-cut strips right away. So we can jump in and do a lot of our piecing. You're going to be going through your pre-cut strips and you're going to match, bring four of them together that you want to make into a strip set. And here you can see I've already created um, a variety of the four um, four strip strip sets. I've kind of tried to mix up my darks and my lights, the patterns and browns, so that I don't have all of the browns in one strip set and all the light blues in another. So you'll want to go down through your pre-cut strips, kind of decide, okay, you four are going to always be in one strip set, you four are going to be in another. So once you get your strip sets created, um, pressing all of your seam allowances in one direction, keeping them neat and tidy, you're going to want to um, you're going to need to cut a lot of um, subunits off of this. So one way to do that is to stack your strip sets, one on top of the other, creating a nice parallel line along the top. And then, if you're confident enough, and you could do this one layer at a time if um, you're not sure about cutting through a lot of layers because you are going to be making a commitment to cut through all those layers. But these are two and a half inch wide strips, so therefore I need at least two and a half inches clear. You can see that all of these are different lengths. A lot of our fa fabrics won't be perfectly consistent in length. So we want to overcut to make sure that we can get a two and a half inch wide unit. So go by your shortest piece underneath there. And then also line up a horizontal line with one of the seam lines so that you can make sure that you get a nice square slice through those layers. And then I would turn this around. So they made up and they stick together really nicely so you can even move an entire section like that and everything stays together. A little bit short on space here. Let's move it over just a little more. So I need a two and a half inch strip, nice and clean, down through like that. And I've already got four ready to go for my first um, 16 patch. So I could take this to the sewing machine then, one, two, three, and four, and I can join those rows together to create um, my first 16 patch. Now, you wouldn't always have to um, join them in the exact same order. You can flip rows around and you will have more than just these four um, strip sets. So go through and make all your 16 patches. You get to make a lot of headway on your quilt top really quickly with that kind of patchwork creation. So now that you have 16 patches created, we then need to create the X and O blocks. So these are very similar. I said, when using the exact same method, we can create both of these. 
you do note the background, this light fabric is the same, but the fabric that um, we're using for the diagonal seams does vary. This is a navy print and this is more of a charcoal print. So follow your, uh, your instructions for which of the fabrics and how many of each of these types of units you need. Now, the thing that we're going to do is we're going to, I'll use the darker one here, that's a little easier for you to see my um, work, put it out here. We need to be able to mark each of our squares with a diagonal seam, and that will be our stitching line. Now, the big problem sometimes occurs when you're working on dark fabric is, what do I use to mark it? Because a lot of times we're using a, um, a mechanical pencil, and we can see that on light fabrics, but it's really hard to see on dark. So my dark pen, set that aside for this time. Um, I can choose a ceramic pencil or a chalk pencil in a light color, those will work. Also possibly even a yellow lead if you need to. Um, I believe that the ceramic pencil in white will show up enough so that you can see what I've marked. We're going diagonally, corner to corner. Yeah, that makes a nice line. I'll make it nice and heavy so you can see we, where we are going to be stitching. Now we're going to be placing that into one corner and we're going to stitch right on that line so that we can create that triangle in the corner of our light block. And we're going to stitch right on that line. Oops, got to jump start here a little quick. There we go. Now we're going to want to open that block, that um, triangle out to make sure that it covers the triangle underneath. What we're trying to do is kind of replace that corner that used to be light color with a dark triangle. And when we're using batiks, they even finger press really nicely and lay. Um, you will want to take it to the, so to the iron and make sure you set that seam nicely. For time here, trim away the underneath and we have one corner replaced. So if we were to match it up here, we've got this created. We need to do it one more time. You're going to get really good at doing diagonal seams. What you'll want to do is probably more, go down through the entire stack of fabrics that you're going to be using for the specific um, shape you're making, the X or the O, and mark all of those pieces, then sit down to the sewing machine, and you can chain them one behind the other in a continuous tight motion so that you can create a lot of pieces really quickly. It seems like a lot of piecing, but if you have it marked and ready to go, you can do a lot in a short amount of time. So there we open it up and trim again. And then it's about basically orientation. So we would have one, two, three, and four. And then it's just basic uh, four patch construction. Join two rows together, two, or two blocks together, and then join the rows for the X. Now, if this were in the other fabric on the outside, I just want to show you position. If you put the triangles to the center, you can quickly see that that would make the O block like that. So it's just the orientation of the triangles creates the different block. What we need then, the last piece I showed you that we needed to create is the outside, um, the outer edge. You can see that there are triangles that kind of go out into that light background. And the same type of unit with just one triangle though added and joined just two pieces together creates that outer edge for you to float your quilt. Then there is a light blue, wonderful border added and a really fun bigger print as your border and you've created your X's and O's block or quilt of your own. Follow diagrams and it's easy as X's and O's. <laughs> if you'd like to see more of our video tutorials, please visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.